Let's rock it. Let's do it. We got this. We do it. Uh, 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 oh, baby, baby, baby. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sama Tech once again, coming at you with yet another how to video. Today, we're going to be talking about troubleshooting your mining rig. Now, I can't go ahead and get in there and troubleshoot and tell you exactly what's wrong with your particular mining rig. But what I can do is provide you some tips and tricks to help troubleshoot your mining rig and figure the problem out for yourself. Now, if you're even able to follow the video, consider yourself smarter than at least one out of 10 people because apparently one out of 10 people don't even have the capability of troubleshooting. And if that's you, maybe you should look at something other than mining. But if you have those capabilities and can follow some basic ideas to get you pointed in the right direction, then you'll be set. But before we get into that, if you guys want to chat on Rocket Chat and you have some questions about the troubleshooting steps that you need to take to figure out your issue, go ahead and click the join button down below the video. And then on the membership tab, there will be a section for a secret registration URL that will get you into the Rocket Chat. No need to pay for the membership of more than one month. You can just pay for it once, cancel it, and grab that registration URL. Once registered, that will never expire for the Rocket Chat server. Anyways, without further ado, let's talk about troubleshooting mining rigs. There are four types of rig issues that we're gonna narrow this down to and then go through each one. First is gonna be a no post, meaning we aren't even getting to the BIOS screen. You turn on the rig and it just sits there and does nothing. There may be a postcode, something along those lines, but usually with mining motherboards, you're not gonna even get that. Next is going to be not being able to boot into the operating system, whether that's Windows or Hive or Simple Mining or Minerstat, whatever it is, you're not able to actually boot into the OS, and we'll talk about that. Third, there is not detecting a GPU. So in this particular case, what happens is you boot into the OS and you have a red X on basically in device manager for that graphics card or in Hive OS or other similar ones, you may have like a red box that says something like not detectable, can't detect GPU, something along those lines. And then finally, fourth is minor reboots. Now, this is a little bit more tricky because minor reboots could be happening on multiple cards, on single cards and so on and so forth. But the idea is that you have actually posted, you've booted into the OS, all GPUs are detected, but after a few hours or a certain given amount of time the miner reboots either a whole operating system reboot or just the miner itself so first let's talk about not posting this one should be relatively simple to troubleshoot first remove all the GPUs and then see if the motherboard will boot up and this should help you alleviate any issues that may be due to graphics cards causing the no boot issue. But if that doesn't fix it, then what you wanna do is start checking other components. First, reseeding the CPU by removing it and then putting it back in the motherboard. Reseeding the memory by removing it and then putting it back in the motherboard. And then finally, trying to clear the CMOS. On all motherboards, there should be a little watch battery looking deal with a little metal tab. And to clear the CMOS, you're gonna pop that metal tab and pop the battery out set it to the side for 20 seconds and then take it back and place it back in the motherboard and that should reset your BIOS settings. If none of these work, then you need to go ahead and check your power supply and make sure that it is functioning properly. If the power supply isn't functioning properly, then you'll need to replace it. Of course, most of the time it's gonna be the CPU, the memory, or of course the GPUs. So hopefully that gives you a better idea. Now, won't boot into the OS is gonna be a little bit different. It will still take the first step. And so basically you can always remember that with no posting or not being able to boot into the OS, you want to always initially remove all the GPUs from the equation. So unplug all of your risers and try to boot from there. So if that works, you want to start adding in one GPU at a time, because typically if it won't boot to the operating system, there is a thread getting hung on one of the graphics cards. 
So as you're adding them back in, add one in, boot it up. If it boots into the OS, you know that's good. Shut it back down, add the second GPU in, boot it back up. If it gets into the OS, shut it down, rinse and repeat until you find the offending graphics card. At that point, what you would want to do is swap that GPU with a working GPU and see if it will post. If it does, you know it's the riser setup, either the USB cable, the riser itself, or of course the connection at the bottom. It could also be power. So in some cases, you could have a bad rail coming off of the power supply that's not powering the riser properly. Either way, to narrow it down, you swap the bad GPU with a good GPU to test that. If the GPU is faulty, meaning when you swap it to a good G a known good GPU and it still doesn't work, a known good riser, essentially, then you know it's the graphics card and you can start troubleshooting there. Now, if it is the graphics card, you wanna troubleshoot that separately. What I would recommend doing is using a full-on by 16 PCIe slot, slapping that GPU in there, and then trying to boot that way and then you'll be able to start narrowing it down. Most of the time this comes from flashing a BIOS improperly, and if you need help trying to figure out how to flash a bricked GPU, we have the how-to on this channel for AMD. As far as for NVIDIA, it's not typically gonna be the BIOS because most of y'all, including me, aren't flashing any specific like BIOS onto an NVIDIA GPU outside of a few kind of special cases. For example, the Kingpin series but that would be a different topic for a different time because uh, you're typically not gonna be mining on a Kingpin series GPU, typically, right? <laughs> and even if you are, you're probably not gonna flash it because most of those are aimed at increasing core voltage and performance in video games, not increasing memory speed and decreasing core voltage. So you typically wouldn't even flash even in that case, if you had a Kingpin card, right? Now there are some older NVIDIA cards that we will be talking about that you can flash for some potential performance improvements in mining, but I'm still working on even just getting out as the 1060 six gig worth it for mining, which if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button. So oh, that pretty much wraps it up there. The last step for won't boot to the operating system is to rebuild the operating system. So you wanna rebuild the OS. In the case of something like Hive OS or Linux, if you're booting from a USB drive, get it plugged in and use Etcher or Rufus or something along those lines to rebuild it and see if you can get back in. That's kind of the step if removing all the GPUs don't work. Third, we have not detecting the GPU. So in this particular case, what happens is you boot into Windows and you open Device Manager and there's a red X on the GPU. You're able to get into the operating system, you're able to post, but you can't get past that certain step where it detects the GPU. Or if we're talking about in the case of Linux or Hive OS, in this particular case, you'll get a red box and it'll say missing GPU. Now, there's a few reasons for this that could be making this happen. And the first one that you want to check is drivers. So in Windows, you want to make sure that you install the proper driver and go ahead and test again. You can use an application called DDU, Display Driver Uninstaller, to clear the Windows registry out all the way and then try to reinstall the driver and see if that functions or fixes it. In the case of Hive OS, it's a little trickier because if it is a driver issue, it depends on if you are on AMD or NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA, you can push a driver update to support the 3000 series GPUs. So if you're getting a red box in Hive OS with a 3000 series GPU, you probably just need to run the NVIDIA update tool to update the drivers. However, if you have a 6000 series AMD GPU, it will always show missing as currently there's too much of a conflict between decreasing the performance of the previous generation AMD graphics cards if they updated to the latest drivers for the 6000 series graphics cards. So currently, if you have a 6000 series Radeon GPU, it's best to run it on Windows and kind of separate from the rest of your farm. And that's just something that I have personally discovered here recently, and that's the reasoning I think behind it. Now, it could get more difficult, meaning 
that a driver update's not fixing it, you're still getting a missing GPU. And the next step would be, well, did you flash the BIOS? If you flash the BIOS, you need to go ahead and roll back that BIOS update. So make sure you flash back to the stock BIOS and test again. But if you've already done that and you still have a missing GPU, it's time to locate the missing GPU on the binding rig itself. There's a few ways you can do this. One is to count the numbers and then try to line that up with however the motherboard is reporting it. This can be not as reliable. Uh, just depending on the motherboard and how it labels each PCI slot. So the best way that I've found around this is by cranking the fans up to like 100% on all of them and then knocking down the fans to like 10% on the offending one within HiveOS and then going ahead and tracking it down there. You can also do this, of course, in Windows with MSI Afterburner or whatever overclocking software you're using. Basically manipulating the fans to spin faster on one and slower on the others or vice versa to then locate the GPU. Once you have located the GPU, we're gonna go back to that troubleshooting step of swapping it with a known working GPU. And what will this will do will basically tell us if it is going to be the GPU itself or the riser setup. Now, if it is the riser setup, try using a new riser. But if it's the GPU, then you once again need to troubleshoot that GPU separate from the rest of the cards, preferably using a full by 16 PCI lane or slot on the motherboard directly. And this is gonna re remove any kind of possible issues. Now, when you're doing this, I did want to mention, if you don't have the BIOS settings set correctly to use the utilize the integrated graphics processing unit, you can make this a little bit more difficult on yourself. So if you're using a typical mining motherboard with an Intel CPU, you'll have what's known as an integrated graphics processing unit. And what you can do is go into the BIOS and set that as its default output and then turn off the output over, of course, the PCI e-slot. This will allow you to still get into the system either pre-boot or basically in the BIOS or in Windows and not have to worry about the GPU stopping you from getting into there. Now, once you've done that, we have once again, a guide on how to fix a brick GPU if you need to do that, or if it just appears that something is significantly wrong with the GPU itself, then you can go ahead and move forward with an RMA or something along those lines. Finally, we have minor reboots. Now, this is a little different, essentially, this is going to be, you have everything working, right? Like not only are you posting, not only are you booting into the operating system, not only are you detecting the GPUs, but your miner is running and all the GPUs are detected and showing that they are mining properly. But after a given amount of time, however long this may be, 20 minutes to three days, the miner reboots or the operating system reboots you need to figure out what caused that. In Windows, if you are using a batch file in, for example, Phoenix Miner, you want to add a switch. A switch is basically just a command within the batch file that says do this. The one for Phoenix Miner, for example, will be dash log file space and then name the file. Once you've done that, you'll run the miner and the next time it reboots, you'll have a log file there to go ahead and take a look at. What you wanna look for in the log file is which GPU went to zero mega hash or significantly dropped hash rate, and that GPU is more than likely the offending GPU. It's a little easier to see this in HiveOS because it always does a little red reboot warning. You click that and it'll show you the last portion of the miner itself, regardless of whatever miner you're using in HiveOS. Once again, the same idea is to go ahead and find the GPU that has essentially dropped in hash rate or gone to zero, and that will give you your offending GPU. Once you've located the offending GPU, you want to start with turning off the overclock. If you can turn off the overclock and it doesn't reboot for a given amount of time, however long you're trying to get past, then you know your overclock was bad for that particular GPU. Now, if that doesn't work, you want to go ahead and swap it with a working GPU to once again eliminate the possibility of it being the riser or another piece of hardware. Finally, it could be the power supply not supplying enough power to the GPU itself. 
And this is actually quite common with the Bitcoin power supplies. So the ones that start selling every single time mining takes off that are like 2000 watts, platinum, 80 plus platinum, which makes no sense and blah, blah, blah. All the key terms that don't make any sense. Those are typically the ones that start having weird power delivery issues on different rails. And you'll notice that for whatever reason, it could be working with one GPU on that rail and not on another. So in that case, what you also wanna do is swap the power. And then you'll be able to kind of troubleshoot your way through what is not functioning on your mining rig. So these are some of the basic troubleshooting steps I take when trying to troubleshoot a mining rig. I wanted to share them with you guys. Once again, this is not like a, hey, you can definitely fix whatever your issue is with these steps. It's this is how to get down and dig down into the issue, figure out what it is kind of video. If you need some more additional help, obviously check out the rocket chat by clicking the join button. Once again, I hope you guys had a great weekend or are having a great weekend. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next Tuesday.